Hello and welcome to episode number 219 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. This is The Secret Show. Hello to everyone in the live chat. I appreciate you being here. Mark Sarchin is here with me and we are teaming up as we always do for The Secret Show because we like to talk about what's going on in the community. And this is the lighter side of Flat Earth. Admittedly so. That's what The Secret Show is all about. We will talk about what's happening in Flat Earth. We'll discuss meetups new videos, more. We're going to talk about Mad Mike finally doing as promised, launching his rocket and what it all means, if anything. We'll again touch on the Flat Earth documentary Behind the Curve and the upcoming Flat Earth conferences and the convention in the UK right around the corner and more. Plus, probably the most important thing, we're all going to die. Well, maybe not, but we will enjoy a toast to what could be our final days here on Mother Earth due to an impending disaster. Yeah. The Heavenly Palace Chinese Space Station is due to fall to Earth any day now, and it's really bumming me out. It's the size of a bus, plus the solar panels. We don't know where it's going to land, but it will land shortly and may kill us all. So we're going to help you prepare for that. You and your family need to be safe in this troubling time. Mark Sargent, welcome to The Secret Show. Everybody panic! Everyone run! <laughs> Buenos dias, Patricia, and uh, welcome to Telemundo. This is not a Spanish outfit. This oh. Is, um, oh, I'm Because sorry. of the flower in my hair, I'm wearing a floral shirt with birds on it because spring is in the air. That's the reason why I'm wearing it. So Five I'm representing minutes. Passover, Easter any other pagan holiday of your choice. Then I'd like to reserve a table for four at the <laughs> Molokai restaurant in Waikiki. As long as you're buying, I'm having it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. Well, let's have our drink so right. that we can toast to our last moments on earth because any second now, even during the show, bam, lights out that space station from China that's been out of control as it, uh, as it orbits around the earth in free fall could crash down and destroy us. It could right. hit your house, Mark, um, with the island outside of Seattle, me here in Houston, Texas, or any of the people viewing this in the live chat. So if you don't hear from a friend of yours, make sure to pull out an all, put out an all points bulletin. So you've got your drink made and I'm going to make mine. So you tell me what you've got. Okay, so I am currently drinking uh, what's known as a, this is mostly a junior mint. Wait, Jolly Green Giant Blood? No, no, yeah, no, it looks like, it looks like chlorophyll, but actually it is a combination of, okay, so it's one part peppermint schnapps mm. and one part Kahlua. That's that's an official junior mint, and it tastes honestly like a melted junior mint. Which that is, sounds like something I would totally enjoy. It's delicious. It's super super sweet. But what I, the reason why it's green is I did half part peppermint schnapps to half part creme de menthe, which is green as you know, and then the Kahlua. It's very very minty. It's it's actually a double mint drink. <laughs> mm. 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 Now you could cut that if you wanted to, and I have with heavy cream with mm. one part heavy cream to all that. And that takes out the bite of the mint if you don't want it as minty, but then it's heavy cream. So, you know, then yeah, it becomes exactly. kind of a Not heart, so for you. Heart, heart attack in a glass at that point. <laughs> it, will, it really will be your final day one mm. way or the other. All right, so I've got my martini glass here in which I've got a uh, little glass skewer and some fresh pineapple. First off, we're gonna go with our organic Grapefruit juice, which I don't know if that goes with pineapple, but I have a little bit left. Enough It'll actually one work. One drink. I think pineapple and grapefruit, you can pull that off. So I'm going to put this in here. So, oh, yeah, there we go. Cooking with Mark and Patricia. <laughs> <laughs> no, right, no, so. now, now you're basically the uh, high end bartender at the oh. Molokai Lounge. Then we've got our 100 proof Stoli vegan vodka. And uh, it's been in the freezer, therefore the frostiness, which I haven't broke out since one of our last drinking shows, since I'm not a big drinker. Cheers. <laughs> go, go. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting all day. To all right. Wrap my lips around this. I think it's so cold. You know, it's weird how cold can be a pain. 
I'm as much not. as hot. It, the cold can burn is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Freezer burn. All right, I'm going to pour burn. this in here. So we're going to see, oh, there's not a lot of room, which is actually good, preventing me from having too much. That looks like about a shot glass amount. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I eyeballed it. Was that more than a shot glass amount? That's yeah, all right. It looks like one of my sister's shot pours. <laughs> That's an over pour is what you're a saying? A little bit. A little bit. And I've got a really cool uh, bar cocktail napkin. And I'm going to hold it up. It says, not to get technical, but according to chemistry, alcohol is a solution. <laughs> uh... Which is pretty funny, actually. That's good. That, that actually reminds me of the people that have been commenting. One out of every, oh boy, 50 people that comment on some of my interviews, you know, when I say that water is wet, fire burns, they'll, you know, the, the nerds, again, that's nerd. They, they will go in and say, well, you know, technically water isn't wet. That's like, oh, dude. Please get with the program. You're killing me. It's like, fine. I will Enjoy out -nerd, the humor. <laughs> I will out nerd you a single water water molecule is not technically wet because it's a single water molecule but since there is no such thing it's always surrounded by tons and tons of water molecules they're all making each other wet so don't give me that crap and people understand it and no newscaster has given me grief about it you know you mentioned my outfit and you thought it was um i don't know maybe mexican inspired although it's no not. no 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 I was just these with sleeves you. and this bow tie it kind of reminds me of something a librarian would wear you know very <laughs> what? In well, what a librarian you, in a very universe <laughs> my <laughs> librarian universe <laughs> what Hi. Wait, how about if i i can't put my finger to my lips and say shh because people will say it's masonic but just imagine if i did that total librarian no. A, a um, librarian, maybe in a very nice section of South, Southern California, very close to the Mexican border. Which also has a bar in it. <laughs> which also has a bar in it. <laughs> all right, let's drink, all of us in our live chat and who are watching this later, to our <laughs> final days on Earth before the uh, Chinese space station comes down and kapows us on the head. Goodbye, everybody. Nice knowing you. Hmm. Well, that's a good drink. Seriously, a junior mint. I've never really even had these until recently. That was a really good idea. And this is a bit on the strong side. Why didn't you stop me from putting all that vodka in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And this was because I was going through my, my grandfather's liquor cabinet. So. Oh, yeah. Since your grandfather's passed, all his liquor's yours. <laughs> yeah, I know. I score. <laughs> he didn't die, you know, of old age. No. Well, no, no he did, actually. He hadn't been drinking much. So the, some of that stuff was pretty old. Well, some of that being old is actually good, right? Mm -hmm. When my father died, my mother didn't really drink, maybe just wine. She outlived him by several years. My dad in 08 and my mom in 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, my brother got the liquor cabinet. <laughs> so, really? Yeah, he wanted it. I mean, the actual liquor cabinet and oh, the, the actual contents. Cabinet. And they had some very cool bar accessories. I have a full bar with accessories. I didn't really want any of it. But they had all those cool bar accessories, which you can go out and buy anywhere. But these were vintagey 60s. Oh, ones. yeah. Oh, I can. They're I really can. nice and much better made than the ones today. But he he called it. He got dibs. I can top uh, you there. And I don't have them because uh, my sister wanted them for her bar thing. And that was he had some World War II German wine stoppers, which were people. <gasps> so it's cork and then people carved from wood. And they actually had little animations that you could, you know, little. You know what? During that time frame, so many things were um, animated. Might not be the word. Uh, they moved. There were yeah, things, desks, yeah, accessories, yeah, little... etc. That were yep. uh, some of them. You even put a coin in, and the thing would move. Yeah. So it was, it was that is cool. I just ordered something cool, which is a uh, wine stopper, or it could be used for vodka. That's a glass cut in the shape of a unicorn's head. Mm. So. I'm very excited to get that. That's cool. I don't know why, but okay. So since this is a show about flat earth, perhaps we should start talking about flat earth, but first right. this drink, but first this message from your sponsor, alcohol. Drink responsibly. Not like us. Mm -mm. We are drinking and slaving behind hot microphones, which exactly. really probably <laughs> should be illegal. And this microphone probably will make me go blind. Mm. Yeah. It might make you sterile. <laughs> What? <laughs> Don't hold it too close to the family. <laughs> really? 
No. It's not, not like what like it's not like the old school radar detectors. That's that was justice right there. You know, the old school Oh my uh, dad had one. Well, he didn't go stereo. Well, no, not no the, the radar, the radar no, no, the radar guns the car. car. Oh. And the 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 joke was well, not a joke. It was kind of cruel, which was the cops, they were sneaky, right? So they keep it in their lap while they were before they were waiting and then they bring it up and and click you, right? Uh -huh. But it was on the entire time in your lap. So what do you think happened to him? Oh, some, wow. Yeah, some bad things. Hmm, interesting. Well, you know, a lot of us with our cell phones will occasionally hold them down by our cr crotchal area. I hate the word crotch. It's creepy. Crotchal? <laughs> I just made that up. But we'll hold it near our private regions. And, of course, totally don't do it. Don't yeah. do it. Yeah. And when you go to bed at night, don't charge your phone near your bed. Um, keep it as far away as possible. And if you've got Wi-Fi, turn it off at night. And mm. this show is not run on Wi-Fi. It's plugged right into the system. And everyone always says that during the live show, but not later in the broadcast, when you watch it on YouTube, there's little weird matrixy skips and jumps. And I'm wondering if any of those are happening right now. It could I don't be like hard to say. There there could be some skips and jumps. There could be some skips and jumps. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> let's have another. Let's have another. Let <laughs> well, that's going to happen anyway. <laughs> exactly. Let's, let's um, be honest here. Hey, you know, what was, what, it, we should do something aside from drinking and then going directly into flat earth. We hmm. should help people. We should help people prepare for the uh, the Chinese um, space station crashing to I, earth. I do don't think my survival guide will quite cut, cut it. I think we're But you've got to have some idea else. of how we can, um, I don't know, help people defend against the debris that's going to crash through their roof and kill them and, and their and children. I'm sorry, what's the name of that space station again? Uh, space, the heavenly, heavenly, I don't know, Heaven's Gate. No, that's not it. <laughs> not Heaven's Gate. I know that. Remember Heaven, Heavenly. Uh, the Heavenly. Oh, you know what? I said it and I can't even remember it. Heavenly crashing, Heavenly bus. Yeah, that thing. Whatever. All right, it doesn't really matter. So this thing's coming down, and we're going to give you some quick tips on how to protect yourself mm -hmm. from the debris, which is made up of a, a twisted ball of radioactive molten metal. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, um, yeah exactly. Ooh. So what do, you, what do you got? Well, I've got two ideas. My first idea I just picked up off my dressing table is this bottle of lovely perfume. Now, if you've got a bottle of perfume, cologne for the men, just spray it over your head, <laughs> totally protected against that thing hitting you and killing you because that thing's totally real and spraying perfume over your head is going to totally protect you. It's good. Magic perfume. I like it. Mm -hmm. it smells good too. I, I have no doubt. All right. Uh, what's, what's your second one? So yours is so good. You're going to make me go through both. Actually it is. Yeah. You don't want to follow me. <sighs> All right. My second one is a very heavy <laughs> book because in a recent, <laughs> a, book. a very heavy book, it's an older book that I've got. It's called French New Wave. Right. Uh, Francois Truffaut. It's about all this. That's Bridget Bardot on the front. But right. I, I kind of like old films, especially new wave films. Um, this book will protect you like in the school shootings. Am I allowed to say that? A couple of the students held books in front of them and, you know, uh, AR-57 bullets glanced right off. I did not know that. So yeah, we don't this have is quite there. thick and you hold that over your head or your child's head or your pet's head. Total protection. It doesn't have to be this book. It can be any book. Just make it a big, thick one. That's actually not bad. I had not heard the students thing about how yeah. they were holding books in front of them. <laughs> that's that's brilliant. Any port in a storm. It's too bad we don't have any pictures of books with holes in them. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying, no, not not on both sides and just one you know, side. A bullet that actually uh, that I, exactly went into a book. The the the. Man, young man, I almost called him a boy student. I'm not going to name his name because I don't want to get the channel taken down for bullying. Uh, whose last name reminds me of a pig. So we all know who we're talking about. Uh, I've seen recent videos about him. And first of all, he was interviewed on TV and he said he was in the school when the event happened. And then I right. saw later stuff that said he rode his bike as fast as he could to the school to do interviews after he heard about the event. 
Really? Sad. Because I could have sworn that one of his little interviews was with some kids in a darkened classroom exactly where he was asking about gun rights yeah but so how did he ride his bike there as fast as he could to get interviewed well he'll probably say well after the event i ran home <laughs> all right well <laughs> my, my little bike <laughs> my little thing to protect you from uh, your impending doom which is the chinese space station is well rather unique and you're probably thinking what's this this is a special umbrella. It's a magic duck umbrella? With a duck on it. Why? Uh, wait, wait, wait for it. Oh wait my gosh, I know, I know, I know. Hang on. Can I blow it? Nope, don't you dare. Okay. Hang on. There we go. Duck and cover. I ah. knew it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So... Okay. I feel I feel so much better now because I've helped my fellow man. Sometimes they've been saying that it might fall in Australia. Other times they say that it might fall over Michigan, where my family lives, the remainder of my family anyway, my sister and my niece, um, or New Orleans, where my brother lives. So no. we don't know where it's going to fall. No, we don't. And because science can't pinpoint it exactly, all of us, need to get a book or a duck umbrella or magic perfume stat regardless i God would be speed, everyone i would be afraid very afraid exactly <laughs> first flash you see in the sky i would just hit the deck jump on start the screaming car, and looting <laughs> throw your loved ones <laughs> to the ground yeah just start looting immediately Basically, <laughs> exactly. you're in a convenience store and you see a flash of light. I mean, just grab as many bags of free to lay products as possible and, and run out without paying. Or go to Tiffany's. <laughs> or go to Tiffany's? <laughs> well, what are you, you going to That's the different priority. It's like, oh, we. Diamonds we should, are one of the hardest substances known to mankind. They might We have. should loot that Cartier store. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> Why? There's Ooh. cases of water over here. I know, but I really wanted that watch. <laughs> Seriously? You're speaking my language. Yeah, I All know. Right. <laughs> I know. I, this is not <laughs> completely outside of the realm. So uh, anyway, uh, I suppose I should close this eventually. Because By the way, the old wives tale about like bad luck by opening an umbrella inside, totally not valid in this case. Oh, wow. You know, I'd completely forgotten about that. That reminds me of that, that I've silly. I've broken mirrors before. That Stephen Wright joke where he, he goes. I love like, him. I, I broke a mirror and I'm supposed to get seven years bad luck. My lawyer thinks he can get me five. Nice. I yeah. love the deadpan delivery. However, I revisited Stephen White Wright back in um, 2016 and was listening to his routines and they didn't make me cry tears of laughter like he did when I originally heard it. You know how well, you know, humor his, has its place in time. His first album, I Have a Pony, was in 1986. That's how far ahead of the game he was. Mm-hmm. I saw him three times in yeah. once in Seattle, once in Bellingham, Washington, and one in Boulder, Colorado. I've never ever seen him. I am very he's, jealous. He's still touring. Even now. I mean, he's got so much material he can use. He can I want to go to a comedy club with other flat earthers. Wouldn't that be so fun? That would be fun. You know what? Probably pretty much doing anything with even hard time with other flat earthers would be fun. Hard time. <laughs> From you know, looting. Nobody nobody store. uses hard time anymore, I would think. And I don't really like Tiffany. I'm just saying Tiffany store. I like Cartier far better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to eat this pineapple, but it'll make a mess and be gross on camera. So I'll do it. I want to oh. do a mukbang, a flat earth oh, mukbang oh, no. or mukbang where you eat a full meal, like excess food, and you show everybody and you're like, mm, nom, 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 you know, it's very enjoying of the uh, of the eating. It'd be a little tricky. I mean, you could probably pull it off. But you and have talk never... flat earth at the same time with other flat earthers. I want to do it. But I've put it off because, you know, screenshots of people with spinach between their teeth and just the whole grossness. Oh, yeah, I didn't even didn't even occur to me that yeah. that would be. Yeah. The expression, I think, uh, hell is other people is... Um, I know who that said that I can't recall right now, but um, the that famous quote. My mother said that hell is other watching other people eat. Kind of true. Well, if you're hungry, yeah. Well, <laughs> that's true. No, but I mean, if you're like watching people eat and chew, it is kind of gross. Actually. Again, for the internet, there's now something for everybody. 
Everybody's no. got a thing. There are people think, oh, I've fallen into that crazy corner of the internet when they find flat earth that aren't flat earthers before right. they realize it's true. There are really crazy corners of the internet. Yeah. We we pretty much. I don't mean the dark net. I mean the stupid the stuff. Yeah, yeah. The stupid stuff. The let's see see if we can eat three boxes of cereal challenge, and that's just one of a that's thousand a different thing. food things. Challenges yeah. are a big thing on YouTube, and that's how you get the big hits. Not well, talking about something that's very important and very true, and can be actually fun, like flat Earth. We flat Earthers have. We have fun. We're not ashamed to admit it. The conferences, right. the conventions, the meetups, the the fun that happens in live chats, the sharing of videos. I mean, it 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 is fun. Agreed. There's Agreed. no people say, "Oh, you're taking a serious topic and making it lighthearted." Damn right, because without happiness, joy, and fun, there's really no point in being alive. True. I agree. I'll hey, drink uh, to that. But I, I will too. All right, uh, let's now talk flat Earth. By the way. Okay, so I got some. As you know, I get letters. I get letters. I get lots and lots of letters. Letters every day. And this one is from EarthTruthers.com. Interesting Earth, name. EarthTruthers.com. Brett Anderson, to be more specific, and he has sent me some swag. So as you know, I, I get shirts. I get lots and lots yes, of shirts. Do. And you're probably wearing one right now. Uh, no, this, is, this yeah. one's actually a gaming shirt that I, I stole from a nice Canadian girl up from Victoria. But mm -hmm. this, I know who that is. Yes, you do. Uh, um, by the is, way, I have to point out that you are wearing a dress shirt with a collar. I am wearing a dress shirt with a collar. Mm -hmm. I'm That's dressing up a little bit more you. because hey, I'm... I'm flat earth is going to the next level and I figure if I'm going to represent from time to time I I'm not trying to keep up with you or anything that's never going to happen but uh, I should actually be more you know just a better rep that's all you are a fantastic representative well, I hate to say don't get me wrong I hate the saying the clothes make the man I really hate that saying because it's like, really? Because I think the man makes the man, but there's a lot of people that's, you know. They, well, a nude man, his words won't be paid attention to. I think that's a famous quote. <laughs> but does he have to be wearing a, a blazer before? I, I know. No, just a loincloth. <laughs> politicians and lawyers and, you know, everyone. Yeah, I, I get that. But so I'm kind of going middle of the road here. Anyway, the point is, I got shirts, and these are a little different because they're not short sleeve shirts. And let me throw them at you real quick. So they're on hangers, so I can show them with one hand. All right. So this one is called. Hopefully, you can see it says "Impossible." Do you see that? Higher, 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 higher. Now talk. Impossible. It's a long sleeve burgundy I shirt. I love it. In yeah, that's... fact, that's the name of the brand new Celebrate Truth right. uh, documentary that just came out, Impossible. I'm sure there's no copyright infringements, but uh, this one was sent to me, so that's kind of fun. Nice. Okay. And let's throw that one over there next to the duck and bird. By the way, Jean-Paul Sartre said, hell is other people. Oh. I had to look it up, but I knew it, but then the alcohol kicked in. So sorry. Okay, this one is called Flat Earth Going Global. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up. Flat Earth Going Global. And I know he wants me to wear these, but it's like it's not going to show up as well as if I just do this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Flat Earth Going Global. Love that one. Okay. And the last one is you'll recognize this, I think. Flat life. I like it. Yeah. How's that for fun? So if Back you guys it up want just a second. What? Back it up just a second. That's not what I meant. Oh my gosh. Back it up a just a second. Of... Uh, too many. As the alcohol. <laughs> I like that one. Hey, bartender, just put some alcohol in it next time. <laughs> okay, so you like that one? Yes. Okay, cool. So if anybody wants any of these shirts, uh feel free to email Brett Anderson. He's at earthtruther.com, and I will have these and maybe wear them at certain things. So, Brett, good work. Yeah. And okay. Robbie D of Celebrate Truth will like the impossible one. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know who's got t-shirts? I don't know if he's up to selling them yet or he's in the process of making them, but I saw a recent uh, Flat Earth Debates Nathan Oakley 1980 channel video that's got his daughter Eleanor and himself sitting together in the thumbnail as of March 28th, 2018. And Nathan Oakley is making Flat Earth Debates swag, as you call it, t-shirts, maybe mugs and other things for the Flat Earth Debate. So watch out for those to be sold at a uh, YouTube channel near you. uh, I I shouldn't say swag. The better, the the more current term I think is Is merch. Swag? No, it's merch. Merch. My brother, who owns a rock and roll clothing store in New Orleans on Decatur Street. Um, It's not Decatur Street. My God. Take it. You know what? Really, I should just close this show down because I can't even remember what is anything at the moment. That's all right. He has a clothing store. He's got a clothing store, rock and roll clothing store. Yeah. And um, anyway, his store has merch and he's always called it merch. He's never called it anything else. Now, I think merch is stuff you sell. Swag, I think, is stuff you get free oh. or swag or whatever, however you say it. Although I think you can also get free merch. Mm, yeah, that's probably true. Too. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, so I've never really like t-shirts that much, to be honest. I, I, shocking no one. No, it's when I used to work for a radio station, I was usually the only woman or one of two women who were on the air. And when we'd go to a, events and have to broadcast live from a car dealership or, you know, intro somebody at oh, a concert. They your radio station shirts. Yeah, they would give you a radio station shirt and the shirt would be a man's shirt. You had men's S, M, L or XL to choose from. And I'm a small woman. Even the man's small is like big on me. And it didn't show your figure very well. And I, obviously I'm not into wearing like low cut stuff and showing my body, but I still don't want to be swamp wearing a giant tent when I make a public appearance or ever. And uh, anyway, I used to try to get stations I worked for to print me at least a woman's size t-shirt, but uh, they never mm. would. So I would say, yeah, I'll wear the t-shirt. I'll be there Saturday. And then Saturday I'd just show up wearing my own clothes. Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. So yeah. Again, That's surprising. Me. Not me. <laughs> but I like flat earth t-shirts. I do. Sure. Um, sure. Because there's something in it that has truth resonating as opposed to some radio station where I worked and then now I don't work and I don't really care, you know, Dif- whole, totally different animal. I got you. I do. Okay. I'm listening okay. to you. I want to eat this now. I'm going to eat it. But All right. I will cover you while talk. you're eating it. All <laughs> right. So if you guys have been living in a cave the last couple of days, Mad Mike, after two failed attempts, and hmm? by that I mean he didn't launch anything. He just got out of the cockpit and talked to people. Uh, he's launched into the air. He went up a couple thousand feet, parachutes deployed, landed, and uh, people rushed over with film cameras to get him out. And he wasn't severely injured. It was one of those, you know, pry him out. And it's like, oh, my back. And then he was carried off to his house. And how is his back now? Because I've seen some of the video footage of paramedics taking him on this, I don't know what you call it, but a, a board and then onto a different board. Oh, oh, he died, Patricia. Oh. Uh, well hey no <laughs> good <Cheers>. night everybody <laughs> the, um, uh yeah roll credits no he he's fine from what i can what i can tell i i think it was just added drama and between you and me and you know the internet he, he, look he he did the he finally did the rocket jump because a lot of pressure on him people saying oh, you yeah. lied you took money you owe it well, to us no. Not just that. I mean, there was a documentary team that had been following him around for weeks and, and staying in contact for months. And you know, need- the paranoid, overly so in some cases, but rightfully so in others, YouTube community, some are saying that he didn't really get in that rocket and that was all faked footage. And oh, even if it off. was, even even better. Although I think it was, he was in there because I don't think... You'd have to be nuts to go up in that thing. Not literally. I was. I volunteered to go up in that thing. Well, you're nuts. I am certifiable. (laughs) You're, uh, you know, maybe released from a mental hospital recently, (laughs) from what I've heard. (laughs) Thank you, Patricia. That's awfully kind of you to say. That's what friends are for. And if I didn't have to take my medication right now, I'd yell at you. So, (laughs) no, no. What what happened? Wait, I need to protect myself from you and your yelling (laughs) with my special protection perfume. TM. 
I had a guy at one of my offices that if he heard any profanity, would actually go language bubble, language bubble. And it's like, really? Wow. Uh, wow. So, you know, I, I think I think it was a real jump because the second parachute deployed within 10 seconds of hitting the ground. I believe and he did it. I can't think of an automated process that would kick off at that particular, you know, altitude. I mean, I suppose you could do it, but and of course, if it's fake, hey, fine. But either way, the jump was covered by all the media. Oh. I mean, everybody, you know, grabbed it immediately. Just Washington flat Earth into the search engine of YouTube. Uh, and and like, oh yeah, today, and it's boom, 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 all man, Mike stuff. Now yep. he didn't prove flat Earth. He yep. didn't set out to prove flat Earth. It was kind of, kind of just a publicity stunt. Um, some people feel he ripped people off, or IPS was involved in ripping people off. You know what? No to all of that. I didn't have anything to do with it. He's personally, he's gonna, but he's going to get a little film out of this. I mean, that's why that's why he had to do he it. He did it. It, yeah. it. That's good. Finally, it was done. The thing has been like a burden on all of us, a burden yeah. on our shoulders with people saying, "Oh, when's he going to launch? When's he going to like like I would know. I don't know. I've never actually had an interview with him, although I did attempt at one point. As much criticism as we have gotten about that, it is still probably the best eight thousand dollars the community ever spent because people started talking about flat earth in oh. the hinterlands where they'd never heard heard about uh, it before hinterlands that, those what? are the words i come up with while <laughs> drinking wow the uh, first drink i'm much more intelligent after that totally downhill so I'm, catch me on the first drink or forget it <laughs> the uh we got three waves of headlines out of that mm -hmm. I mean, three big waves. And again, everybody, I mean, Golf Digest ran a freaking story. That's on, on nuts, Nuggets. by the way. Golf Digest. I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fortune Magazine. I mean, everybody. It's an interesting story. It is. And it'll carry over to, because everyone ties it to Flat Earth. Flat Earth technically was still on this new green rocket. Not as pretty as it was in red, but it was still there. And lots of people. I'm, in fact, I'm looking just at... Uh, let's see if I type in flat earth and I say, say just in the last 24 hours, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you know what? Let's change it to a week because he launched a couple days ago. Right, right. And oh, yeah, by the way, you probably knew we hit 20 million. So if you type in flat earth and sort by upload date, we broke 20 million, which is huge. I mean, it's mm, the sweet smell of success, or is that the perfume? I think Donald Trump's at 22 for give you any. You know, and the whole story was a, a porn star and him. And oh, yeah. Uh, Donald Trump is the most talked about president a lot in about history. It, a lot of interest. Yeah. Hasn't or, every president been involved with somebody uh, not, not their is, And it came that or presidential candidate. Gary Hart, as, for example. I mean, you know. Not as direct as Clinton. that. Clinton. Yeah, but Clinton and the What dress. if Hillary Clinton had won? Who would she have been involved with? Not Peter North. Who is a porn star or was a porn star? I not know that dates probably me. anyone involving she sex. no, she would have not been involved with Ron Jeremy. And <laughs> those of you out there in the internet, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Oh. All right, so Mad Mike, we're I'm looking at some of the stories like here, CBS, BBC. Uh oh, oh, and I gotta mention real quick, I uh, love the fact that BuzzFeed is they all have a, they have a secondary channel called BuzzFeed Blue. Wait a and, minute, BuzzFeed Blue, that sounds sort of... Uh, I know, erotic, like it should be on Cinemax at late night. Right, yeah. Cinemax. Yeah. BuzzFeed Blue, uh, the, the guy that interviews us, so if you're looking at the, the thumbnail and you see I Believe the Earth is Flat by BuzzFeed Blue, the guy with the glasses and the fake 70s mustache, that's Wait, the guy... Wait, I that recognize that guy. Yeah, he interviewed us down there. That was the guy that pulled us so aside. So he's got a disguise on? Yeah, yeah. So he's pretending to be a scientist and kind of be a pro flat earther. And I know he's he's picking on us a little bit, but it's okay. So he's know? basically just trying to get himself a story. Yeah, he is. He's he's trying to jump on the bandwagon. He's doing pretty well. He's gotten three hundred and fifty thousand hits in a day on this bandwagon jumper. I'm calling you out, Mister. Uh, there's a lot of bandwagon jumpers. But I'm okay with anybody jumping on the bandwagon. I mean, I and, and more I, attention to flat earth. Like, uh, like for example, here's here's two channels I want to call out real quick. One was a guy and his grandmother, uh, Kevin and Lil, convincing my grandma the Earth is flat. It's got twenty thousand hits in five days. One of my new favorites. I I gotta say this one's pretty. I enjoy this this guy, even though he he tries to make fun of us. 
but it's in an entertaining way. It's a it's a YouTube channel called Twoon, T W O O N, and it's flat earthers and they're flat earth crazies. It's pretty I funny. I don't know if I saw that one. I'm looking through, but that, yes, definitely Kevin and Lil. Yeah, he's got ten thousand hits in the last couple of days, and it's he goes after me pretty hard. But it's all right. It he does it in a in an entertaining way, and I, I totally dig what he's what he's throwing down. So that's uh, Delano TV is back on the chain. Yep, Delano TV. Flat he Earth. can't he can't stay away from it. I love I love Delano because he said, "Oh, I'm not going to do any more flat Earth videos," and then he can't. It's too tempting for hardcore YouTube channels to get into it because the ratings you can't ignore oh, yes. the numbers. It's like right. what, what video did I put out that got better numbers than anything I've done in the last three months? Flat Earth? Oh, okay, I'm doing another one of those. Well, that's why people do hit pieces on certain Flat Earthers because their name in the title guarantees them hits. Yeah. Same thing with Flat Earth in the title. Yep. And it doesn't hurt anybody in Flat Earth when people do hit piece videos. We don't yep. care. Just uh, gets more, uh, gets us more subscribers. And it also doesn't hurt Flat Earth when it's a hit piece video because guess what? More attention on Flat Earth. It's yeah. a win win. It's a win-win. Uh, the big channel called L A H W F Laugh, which is an interesting. I don't know if it's an acronym for something. He did one called Chatting with a Flat Earther. If anybody knows who the guy is, this Ryan guy, who has only been in Flat Earth for a week. If anyone knows how he got on the show, I'd love to know. Uh, this guy's got 2.1 million subs, and the guy he brought on has 400 subs. Now, when I looked into the guy, I found out that he believes in satellites. He doesn't really know much about flat earth. He's only been in it for a very short time. A very short. He's, he's, but that's cool. Like, but still, the satellite thing made me think, is this guy for real? I mean, look, I, I understand how Lucy got on. Lucy Lemons got on the show. You know, that other guy, Anthony Padilla. Well, but, Lucy Lemons is for real, though. Yeah, yeah. She, she's been doing some flat earth stuff. This guy's only done been in flat earth for apparently a week. And he gets on. And now this video has got 250,000 hits since the 24th. A little bit of a little chunk of change there. There's another video that came out by Sentinel Apologetics. And Hugh Ross is the guy doing the interview. And the question is, is there any credibility to the flat earth idea? Hmm. So there's that one. Uh, let me see if there's any others. Uh, Associated Press. Inside Edition. That was a weird one. I haven't seen. I haven't even spoken the name Inside Edition. In I was going to say. I mean, holy since, flashback. <laughs> I know. Since the 90s. <laughs> I have not even really. MTV I, Cribs. I mean. What, what? <laughs> I forgot that was a thing. It is like I was going, is Arsenio on tonight? Wearing I mean, a trucker cap. I mean, you know. <laughs> it was amazing. And, and yet Inside Edition. Man out to prove the world is flat. Crashes homemade rocket and it's got 240,000 hits in two days and when I looked at Inside Edition here's the part that threw me I go to their channel and it's they they have 2.2 million subs wow I know wow. I'm going what have you guys been doing for the last I didn't even I mean I thought they were just gone I know I thought they were gone too I honestly did not know they were still a thing Remember so. the MTV show Remote Control? Oh, that was such a fantastic show. <laughs> I did like it, such too. Such a fantastic now, Well, it launched. Colin Quinn. <laughs> it launched Jenny McCarthy. Jenny McCarthy. And there's another woman who I can't think of her name. She had a ah, oh, she was, woman yeah, that's she in the was show. Jenny's, re Jenny's replacement. Yeah, I think so. But anyway, yeah. I thought that uh, Inside Edition was like, you know, kind of like remote control. Just like here today, <laughs> gone tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. speaking of here today, gone tomorrow, Russian vids channel taken down, new channel up for a while, making the rounds on YouTube. Boom. Newest channel off again. Gone. Weird. But he's on Sun and Moon Group a lot and other people's channels. So hmm. he's still around. But yet YouTube just takes his stuff down. It's like the name Russian vids has been red flagged in YouTube land. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've, I've seen other videos where they've shown guys have shown in real time that once you get on the bad list, you know, once you're considered a bad boy or bad girl or bad person, whatever me too, respect. Once you get to, on that list, bad boys, bad boys, what you going to do? <laughs> seriously, seriously. All right. Bartender cut her off. <laughs> I, I, I'm still on the same drink. Uh, it's not helping. So, uh, once you get on the bad list, you are uh, flagged permanently. He, he he was saying to look like like yellow flagged even before the video goes public. You're yellow flagged. 
that's mm -hmm. that's how quick it is. You know, it's like boom, 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 boom. Well, I did notice that on a video that I recently had an interview with Russian Vids, um, and I've done several with him, that it was um, demonetized as I had the video set up before it actually went live because his name in the title, I think. Wow. Mm. The Russian Possibly, thing. who knows? Mm -hmm, so anyway, yeah, so that's the big thing in Flat Earth this week, and it's going to continue on. Everybody, it's going to take you know a delayed effect. Anyone that didn't jump on the, the Mad Mike thing right away, that'll continue on for another couple days and uh, maybe even some late ones on Monday. But that was that was great. And it'll help us because it'll keep it in the public eye for you know beginning of April, because at the end of April, we are heading to Toronto. Mm -hmm. You and I got to be a lot of fun. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, it is the... Toronto Hot Docs Film Festival. It's now we're not Toronto. saying hot dogs. <laughs> hot dogs. Sounds like when we say hot ducks. Picture, we're saying hot dogs. Picture unique New York. Unique. Yeah, anyway. it's like oh, she's vegan, but she keeps talking about hot dogs. <laughs> so weird. Well, we're going to a hot dog <laughs> festival with lots of hot dogs on a stick, and it's everything. And <laughs> and corn dogs for and, everyone. Yeah, corn dogs with ketchup and mustard. Mm. Mm. I'm getting hungry. So. We're going Me to this. Too, actually, we're, that's what happens when you drink. That's why McDonald's exists, by the way. Just letting yeah. you know. We're going to be there on the. I'll just give out our itinerary. We're going to be there on the 29th. We're flying mm -hmm. in on the 29th. On the 30th, we're planning and we'll flesh out the details. In fact, we've got to actually talk about that a little bit with right, the right. audience. We are going to be doing a meetup in Toronto. It is not going to be in Niagara Falls. It is going to be in Toronto on the 30th, and we do not know where it's going to be yet. And we could use some recommendations. We need your help. If so you live in Toronto and if you know the entertainment district, which is where we are staying and where the hot docs, not hot dogs, the hot, hot docs uh, film doc festival is, is yep. uh, let us know of a cool place that on the 30th of April, we can have a flat earth meetup. It's not going to yeah, cost nothing, anybody nothing anything. Serious. A, a restaurant, a bar, and <laughs> I'm sure we can find something, but since but we got to advertise this thing before we go. And I don't live there. You don't live there. So we need somebody who's close by who can say, yeah, I've been there and um, it's a cool place. And then we, I, you know, I can call, you can call, we can. I, I should they, ask Brian from Mississauga. Yes, exactly. There's so many people from Canada that yeah. I have correspondence with too. So if you're Canadian or you've been there enough times to know the entertainment area. Entertainment uh, district. District, uh, excuse me, in Toronto. In fact, the theater that this film is going to be shown at is on the corner of King and John Street. So yeah, King, King Street, and King, yeah, King and King Street West and John. The movie is called Behind the Curve. Mm -hmm. It is uh, actually it's got a little bit of a buzz around it already. Oh, you know what? How many films are going to be shown at the film festival? Well, Probably there were three, hundreds. I don't know. Well, over a hundred, but yeah. there were three. There were three thousand applicants mm -hmm. to this thing. Over a hundred were chosen. I mean, you can't choose too many because the thing only lasts less. Hundreds is a lot of documentaries. It is a lot in of one year. You know, because yeah, you're not going to watch a hundred movies. I, I don't care. Twenty fifth year or twentieth year of hot 25th. dogs. Twenty fifth. Twenty fifth year of hot dogs, and we have the the documentary that Patricia and I and others are in is going to is already being talked about in the top 10 Woohoo! yeah i know i know right I'll up there drink to that or uh, pretty much anything uh, at this point <laughs> to movies so to it, anything <laughs> to drinking to drink flat earth. what are we irish although this is green the uh, and again junior mint very tasty creme i'm de gonna mint, have that drink peppermint schnapps and kalua we're going to have drinks before we see the <laughs> pre-show because you and I get to see the documentary before. We have a private yeah. screening. We have a screening. With, you know, yeah, you know the mucky mucks. Very, very, very high class. Very posh. <laughs> Not. <laughs> uh, no. No, we're, no, we're going to, the film team is actually going to be renting an apartment in the entertainment. In the ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> the ghetto. The ghetto. They're going to be renting a apartment in the entertainment district, and we're going to do a uh, special screening with them. 
Right. That's and they true. want to show it to us so that when we go to the actual screening, we don't just say, oh, my God, <laughs> and start screaming and rushing the just stage start in anger. People. <laughs> Shut the camera off. Shut the camera off. No, 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 no. It's, it's a... Uh, the kindness there yeah yeah standing to us this is this is a common courtesy that uh uh lots of uh, this happens in hollywood with regular movies how do you know uh because i know a little bit about the film industry okay i do okay. i well you know you 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 watch enough movies and you if you're a big fan if i'm a fanboy of, of the whole movie process but so. if you're an actual star you get to say I don't like that scene. Well, exactly. I don't like how I Norm sounded or what I said or how I look. Normally, it's not just a private screening. You get to oh. see the dailies yeah. and there's attorneys involved and agents. And But and in our case, it doesn't matter what we said or how we looked or how we sounded. It's still on the film. Sorry. It's, exactly. Exactly. Well, in other, other cases, it's like Patricia clearly said only shoot her from her right side. Mm -hmm. It's in the contract, you know, and, and then, you know. I have a good side and a bad side. People start throwing tubs of popcorn. This is the other. good side, and I'll spin around, and that's the bad side. Joke. So no, no, I no, it's it's fun, and it, we're, you know, I I can't wait to see it, and I'm excited. I've seen. If you guys want to check out the screenshots from it, at least I hope there's screenshots from it. Uh, the, you can go to oh boy, well it's behind the curve. Type in in Google if I'm not mistaken, behind the curve. Daniel Clark, who is the director. I um, went to I. Is it IMDB? I always get the acronym wrong. Oh, because you can link it from there? Yeah, that's how I found it. Well, and then I looked up Daniel Clark, and then I looked up what he was doing, who's the guy who put all right, it all right. together. Hang on. I'm going to type this in right now. I, is it IMDB? IMDB. INDB. Oh, it's M. Okay, so it's got that right. Movie, not Nuvi. So hang on. Uh, behind the... Uh, oh, wait. It's... Hang on. Keep but that mind. was only a couple of weeks ago. I couldn't oh, find oh, no, no. it. Now, no, no, wait, wait, wait. No, findable. <laughs> All right. Wait, so just, just you behave, or I've got the perfume. <laughs> well, I never. And I can protect myself. Okay, so it's easy, guys. Don't have to do any big joke jumping around. Just go to behindthecurvefilm.com. Oh, go. okay. So it's up for everyone now. Good. Yeah. All before major, we couldn't find it. Got all it. movies, uh, if they're even remotely professional, have a dedicated website. Right, but this and, one hadn't been actually put out yet, I guess. Well, it's it's there. You go. Go go to behindthecurvefilm.com, and you'll see the beginnings of whatever this thing's going to be fleshed out to be. Oh, I'm so and, excited! I know. I'm I'm pumped too because. But we're going to be, <laughs> we're going to meet up. We're going to hang out, and then we're going to do a show ourselves on YouTube. Mark right. and I you know, with my selfie stick, you know, just that kind of live thing prior to seeing the premiere and then after, and hopefully get Daniel and Carolyn and others to speak with us after. And well, it's going to be sure so we're going to take Caroline hostage. I'm pretty well, sure. Yeah. Only if, you know, we don't like what they showed. Yeah, I know. I know. We got to go to the star uh, hardware store, pick up some duct tape. The and thumb screws. Do they sell? <laughs> th Do they sell thumb screws in Canada? Do they sell them in bulk? Mohaha. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. uh, so yeah, so that's what we're gonna do on the. So we're gonna do the private screening with them on the thirtieth, and then wow, it took a long time to actually get through that one day, and then on the. No, I'm sorry. The, the first, the meetups. Are on the you? 30th. Have you been drinking, sir? Uh, sh you shut up. You or should I know. say, son? You don't <laughs> Is know. That what me? police officers call you in the south, son? No, it's a. It's I'm a 90 years old. It's a junior mint. Right. It's very tasty. I want that the, drink. All right, so the meetups. We have to be on have the, that drink next time we hang out together. We haven't I even want. told, by the way, the the team that we're going to have a meetup on the 30th. No, although we I, I think Daniel <gasps> watches. I think Daniel we watches us. By the way. Them. Invite them yeah. to the meetup. Yeah, they've been around a ton of flat earthers. Sure, why they've not? To the conference, they've been they've been everywhere, following Ooh. tons oh of my different god. people. Oh my god! There's multiple levels happening now because they could film, they could do a documentary, you know, an add-on to the to the DVD. A documentary about, about the documentary before it's shown. I know. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. So we'll tell them again. If Daniel's listening, we're going to do a meetup on the 30th. I'm sure you are because I heard you're secretly a fan of ours. But and we don't know where. So, by the way, if you live in Toronto and you know the entertainment district, let us know. Mistier yep, yep, at yep. gmail.com, msergeant23 at comcast.net. Message us. Put a comment um, in one of our videos and let us know a really cool place in the entertainment district where we could have a meetup. And it's not uh, uh, that, that doesn't cost anybody anything to enter. Like they have cover charges in Canada. Maybe they do. I don't know. I've been to Canada before, it's but Canada I, the rules are just it's pretty loose. Up I there. really like Montreal a lot. Been there. Enjoyed it. Loved it. You know, we'll just have to remember some passphrases for the doorman. Like, Earth is flat. No, I was going to say anything like Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's very Canadian. We'll say he syrup. He's a god among men. Something what like else that. is Canadian? Uh, hockey very, pucks. Right. Ketchup flavored potato chips. Okay, that's crazy. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm not making this up. It's a it's a thing. Why don't Ketchup, the flavor is in the chip. Yeah, ketchup flavored potato chip, dill pickled potato potato chips. Uh, pierogies are a big thing. Okay, up there. they have pierogies. We don't call them pierogies though, Other unless you're places, in a Polish. Though. It's a Polish influence. Right, right, right. We call them they, dumplings, and we usually only get them at Chinese restaurants. They call um, them pierogi, and they fill them with just about anything. And they have I've pierogi. Seen those in New Orleans, actually. They have pierogi parties. There. Okay, that's a bit. Extreme. Yeah, I know. Thousands oh, what about that thing where there's gravy and French fries? That's a thing in Canada, which I've never had. It sounds vaguely naughty. It's called poutine. Poutine? Yeah. I want to try that because I know there's a vegan version, I've been told. <laughs> Why do you think that's gross? <laughs> French fries and fake gravy? Well, what about French fries and gravy? They're equally as gross. Hmm. Mm. Anyway, so on the second, we'll have it and we'll have a taste test, blind taste uh, test, and I bet you'll be uh, like, they're both good. Well, I, uh, yeah. I'm not knocking it. I just but don't know if they have a vegan version of. Poutine. I have heard that they do. It sounds like an abomination. Well, I have heard that when people get really wasted drunk, cheers, that put. Teen, I hope I'm saying it Poutine. right. Yeah. In Canada, is what people have later, uh, like after the bar closes or something. Mm. Sounds like a stoner food. It's the exact same thing. Yeah, just get really, really high. I want to have it though, for sure. All I want right. to have that, and I want to have a junior mint drink. Oh, that's easy. Life goals, you've got to have. In them. fact, in fact, if uh, I'd be amazed, like a bartender would be like, "Holy smokes, I got to look that up." I, we can just rattle off. Everybody's got peppermint schnapps. Everybody's got Kahlua. Usually those two things, that's all you need if you want to do it. If you want to lighten it up or turn it into like a milkshake, add some heavy cream or milk or My half and half. brings all the boys to the yard. Oh, wow. I don't think. Wow, really? <laughs> yeah. uh, and okay. So again, our itinerary. Anybody still listening to the show? <laughs> Has there been a collective click as yeah, Dan, Daniel's <laughs> probably on his desk just going Ugh. we have 223 viewers at the very moment I okay we better get professional then yes all right so Wait. our, our <laughs> itinerary me. in case you guys are going to be up in Toronto that we can professional now do I need to hold a book will that be like help the week of the 29th you know what I remember from school girls you look would like hold a their Hawaiian librarian <laughs> Right, I told you I look like a librarian. Girls would hold their school books like this when they were walking in, you know, high school, and boys would hold them. I can't do it because I'm not standing. Boys would hold them down by the hip. No boy would ever dare hold their school books like this. Nor would a girl hold her books by the hip. Did that happen in your high school? It did in mine in California. Excuse me, oh, Michigan. And uh, 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 my God, why can't I even remember where I live? Florida. Groom Lake. Yeah, probably. <laughs> no. All right. So no, did you, did you was it the same where you grew up? Uh, That's how people how there's a different books? for me. You know the academy and then straight to OCS no, no, no. and you know what I'm stuff. Saying. Yeah, I, I understand. I do. Well, is it that how it was with school books in high school? Always. Girls although, hold them here. Boys hold them down there. Yeah, guys really didn't carry a lot of books. Yeah, the maybe. nerds did, and the nerds also carried the books for people like you. But if you were like a real man, you didn't really carry books. <laughs> you didn't. I don't remember even, I like ever. Oh. A backpack, maybe, maybe over your shoulder. Or you just forget your book. Wow. You're going to show that phone off? 
Is that what's happening oh, right here? It's my my new phone case. It's very Holy okay. And that strap comes with the phone, doesn't it? Yeah, it certainly does. Oh. Okay, so aside from that, but you don't remember that in high school? How I you would do, carry your books? I do, I do. I do. I had lockers in high school too. I just um, can't. I, no, but I you take the, it for the part, your class. The part that's throwing me is actually the thought of you studying. I did pretty well in high school, actually. The, having Poindexter write your paper is not the same thing <laughs> as doing it yourself. It's like I got good grades and I hardly had to try. Meanwhile, some nerd at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> How do you know my life story like that? uh just wild stab in the dark okay. all right so we're coming on the 29th meet up on the 30th uh special screening on the first and on the second we're actually going to the theater and seeing a one o'clock showing of behind the curve at the festival exactly so you could join us at the one o'clock showing of the show at the festival Mm. Hot dogs, not hot yep. dogs, hot dogs. If you want yep. to purchase your ticket to go to that, yep. no proceeds go to us. Nope. In fact, nope. Just have fun. No, we're not making it. a we're not making a dime off this. No, thing. we're yeah, no. But we uh we are in it. That we're I in know. it because we wanted to be in it. Yep. And, and we were asked and we said, I'm honored you asked. Sure, I'd love to help. Yeah. And when and as the world works, you wave it off and it's like it's not, not like it's gonna do anything, and now people are talking about it. Well, hopefully people will see it at yeah. this event. And some will say, oh, what a bunch of idiots. Like, you know, we know they will. But others will say, you know, they seem kind of normal. And uh, I'm going to look into that. And then, boom, new flat earthers are born. New flat earthers are born every single day. Yep. And we don't even know how that it happens. It's a video. It's a friend. It's a... You know, it's a, a bumper sticker. It's a business card. It's a one-to-one -one interaction, like sort of a sort of a something on the street. It's like D I T R H or firing off thousands of leaflets or, from a drone. Or, <laughs> or John Smith or anybody uh, that's doing the street activism. It doesn't even matter who it is. It's you telling your mother or your best friend or your brother or your worst enemy. Right. New flatters are burn every single day. Yeah. And um, this is just another way to get the message out. So, I haven't done, you guys probably have noticed, I have not done a trailer. I've been doing trailers for the Denver conference. You know, I've, we're still 30 weeks out or something like that. And so we have plenty of time for that. I'm so but, excited to go to Denver. So excited. Yeah, Den but I'm, I'm, remember, we've got a conference before that. Yes, we In do. Edmonton, Canada. We're going What's back up Canada to Canada lately. All right. We're going back up to Canada in August. And I'm not sure. I mean, I think all the people that are going to speak there are have been nailed down. I just don't know for an absolute fact. That's the only reason I haven't done a trailer yet. Mm -hmm. So I, I will. Uh, which just also reminds me. The what? Just yeah, I know. I, I, probably, I should probably shoot him a thing after this if he's yeah. not watching already. Saying, hey, is is everything we're we're locked in so that is I can just the crew? This is Yeah, is this how it's going to go down? The uh, other thing I mentioned is thank you everyone who has sent me tr uh, promo requests. Oh, my ride. The promo requests for I know here I am. Do you live where Martin Lee Key Flat Earth British lives? By the way, no, Wales? no, I'm in a bad part of Los Angeles and uh, okay. just, <laughs> just all sorts of. Mis when they mis show on the map where you live, there's just crosshairs there. Yeah, mischief and tomfoolery everywhere. <laughs> the, In fact, you live on the, the crossroads of those two streets. Mischief and tomfoolery. <laughs> yep. Uh, where was I going with this? Uh, okay, so anybody, anyone that wants to meet up, by all means, send me their things. We've, we've done a ton of them so far. In fact, there was one in Phoenix just last night. If you want to do a meetup and it's just you and you're planning it and you're going to carry it out and you're going to go through with it, Message Mark at msargent 23 comcastnet and he will make a promo for your meetup. Yeah, the promo. A ton of people there because maybe you've got a big channel, but he's got a fairly big channel, and it'll just be more promos, more yeah. people directed toward the event. Yeah, you don't have to. Uh, it doesn't have to be special. Just pick a restaurant, pick a bar. Pick. I mean, we've had people do it at food courts, at malls, in parks uh next to a dumpster you know in some weird alley well it's convenient that way yeah I, you know you can start a fire when dead bodies can go right in no one will know <laughs> <laughs> on the assassination eh? 
Mm. You know your pig Latin well. (laughs) (laughs) Not not so much. Uh, What else? What else? What else? Oh, Paul on the plane, or Paul on as this channel goes. He got a slot on Truth Frequency Radio, TFR. Congratulations to Paul. I believe his show airs at 4 p.m. Wednesdays. I'm not sure when it starts, but it's 8 p.m. GMT. Truth no, Frequency way. Radio has their set Anyway, up be, look at TFR.com and you'll find Paul on, Paul on the plane. And um, he will, I, he's a massively awesome addition to that whole thing. I am hoping that one day I will get to speak about Truth Frequency Radio. It's like, oh yeah, they pretty much cornered the market on all these flat earthers and then flat earth went through the roof. And they had, you know, because think, think of the flat earth shows that are for or against. Uh, you've got uh, myself with Strange World. You've got Jaronism, mm-hmm. Rob Skiba, mm-hmm. Zen Garcia, mm-hmm. uh, Iron, Iron, Iron Realm Media, Iron Realm Media, Paul on the Plane. Oh, I keep thinking there's one more. Oh, boy. That's still a lot, you know, considering we're talking about one network here. And then you've got several that are against it, like the Gematria guy. That but I goes- think it's great that the ch- the, the network um, – TFR, Truth Frequency Radio, is right. open-minded enough to have pro and anti flat earthers on their on their schedule. Yeah, they well, it's mostly pro. I mean, I yeah. think it's six to two, but still, the fact that you and and oh boy, is it Zach? You mean you know that guy? Uh, he does gematria. And mm-hmm. all I know who thing. you're talking about. He goes against Jaron, and then the other one, he's a British guy, and I'd have to look it up, but he's against it as well. It's not like they dedicate their entire lives against it. But again, there TFR is in a perfect position. So like all of a sudden things won't go great. It's like, oh yeah, because they've got all the archives. Chris yeah. and Sherry Gio. Chris Good and Sherry Gio. Yeah. Great. I'm glad they have uh, you know open minded and other networks, as you know, not so open minded. Well, I was on a network with D I T R H and yes, he and I were. did a show called Truth is Stranger Than Lies. It's in a playlist on my channel if you want to revisit some old interviews with some cool people both uh, anti and pro flat earth. But anyway, that thing got canceled. Why? Because the people that ran the network weren't as open-minded as Chris and Cherie. They turned against flat earth and then ditched all of the flat earth uh, videos, excuse me, not videos, flat earth uh, proponents off their network. And now it's all non-flat earth. Yeah, and here I am, I just did episode 143 Pretty good. That's Pretty a long. good. Jaron's in the triple digits. You know, yeah. It's uh, and Rob. Jaronism Raw, by the way, in case you didn't know. Jaronism Raw, which is great. Mm-hmm. So and oftentimes with Missa. I mean, most of the time with Missa. Yeah. Yeah. So what else? Can I don't we... know. There's not much else going on in Flat Earth. Uh. Well, nope. hey, you know what? I I want to I want to do a special request real quick. Oh, D Marble came back from Korea. Had an awesome time. Oh right. Did we talk streams. about the fact that? Yeah, I mean, congratulations to D Marble and others who went. I mean, my God, that's far away. Just Just normally, just a mild-mannered, good-looking man driving around in a van goes to Korea to talk about Flat Earth. And totally got along with everybody well and made an impact, made friends. I mean, that guy's legendary. No incidents that we know of. No, of course. They were all buried. Great. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a special request what for is anyone that's listening. Uh, as you know, I did a video recently about the blurring effect of the, one of the reasons why Flat Earth has been doing so well. Is Explain the blurring effect. The blurring effect. I am not. I did not make it up. I did not coin it. It was initially coined by a web or a YouTube uh, page, pretty big one, uh, 750,000 subs, called Red Letter Media, which got their claim to fame. Uh, destroying all the Star Wars prequels, uh, the ones that were done in the, the late 90s, early 2000s. They were just horrible movies. And they they just... With Jar Jar Binks, you're talking? Oh, don't, don't, don't. Oh God, I worked for a radio station not. at the time, and we did a premiere of that movie in the area where I lived. And it was just like, did somebody just put acid in my drink? Because this on screen is pure garbage. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. And, and up until YouTube was created, there wasn't a really great venue for people to vent and red litter just uh there was a guy um uh that made a character called mr plinkett and he just destroyed them in in this hours long thing it's like here's everything that was wrong with the, that that trilogy that 
prequel trilogy. Anyway, that's beside the point. The point is, is I was a fan and they came up, the, one of the guys there came up with something known as the blurring effect. And he's saying that everything, every movie that's being made now is a remake, a reboot, a soft reboot, or a unnecessary sequel because there's so much media in the world that the only way the studios don't want to take any chances. The only they're just hoping they can grab a title that ties back to your previous memory. You know, like a, a remake, like the the Brady Bunch or the Adams Family or Lost in Space, and just, just to mention a few. There's been so many movies along those lines, and that and I said, okay, Flat Earth really factors into this because that's one of the reasons why Flat Earth works. It is such an old concept that goes all the way back to when we're kindergarten, you know, first grade, six years old. We all have heard about the earth being flat when we're very, very young. That's why it works. So when we bring up the title now, and I mentioned that at the very end of the video where I said, find me somebody that has been exposed to flat earth who says flat earth. What's that? You know, like they've never heard of the concept before. Everybody knows the concept. And so I was such a big fan of the red letter guy that came up with that. I, I bought, you know, I, I will, I will endorse some of their, their stuff. So I, I bought some cool prints, had them shipped here. And then I mailed them off to him and said, Hey, with a note saying, Hey, I'm a big fan. Can you, can you guys autograph these for me and send them back? And I included money for postage. I have not heard anything yet. So little request for anybody out there they're bored you want to send a quick email send an email for me to contact at redlettermedia.com and all you have to do you don't have to write a letter just put it in the title mark Sargent wants his autographs that's it contact at redlettermedia.com all right and hopefully you know a few people send and they will send me my stuff back but that's how i got the blurring effect where those guys i like that whole blurring effect thing it is cool and it works. It's absolutely true. And there's so much media. And that's why I included the thing. It, everything was really a narrow band for the longest time. We only had radio, television, movies. That's all we had for, you know, decade after decade after decade. And then finally, when high speed internet took off, that's when everything changed. Then we had, you know, digital media came in so many different forms. Your average person can't even begin to list them all. I couldn't. And I love media and I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I mean, the fact that Blockbuster was run out of town by Netflix. Netflix is now apparently the biggest Hollywood producer that there is. Because Netflix is going to be at Hot Docs. They are one of the major sponsors, if not the major sponsor. What does at it Hot mean if Netflix is a sponsor at a documentary film festival why are they involved it is because it uh, some would see it as a conflict of interest but actually it's advantageous for them to do so it's, are they just there for the free booze n n well yeah of course you know, who isn't i mean i'm gonna be sitting in the i mean that's where we are going just having junior men's like, yeah, <laughs> another documentary we need flasks we I need special flat earth flasks slip in your pocket i'll slip it in my handbag and then we'll be like Right no, before. no, I'm going like this. I don't want to see an empty glass. It's like the Sahara over here. Cheers to everyone. The uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's it works to their advantage, sort of like all the television shows. Uh, why do you have like American Idol, right? The 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 the, the people keep the only basically American Idol and all those shows like that are genius because all you basically did was you took the audition process and you put it on camera. You know, put it on television. That's all you did because people forget that whoever wins, they are required to sign. If you you basically you have to sign with somebody that's tied to that show. You cannot go outside of it and and pick up a record contract somewhere else. So that's the same sort of thing. A little little different, not as heavy handed like with with Netflix. They're there because they're looking for content. So they will have not first dibs, but they will be able to approach the filmmakers immediately because they will have reps there and say, oh, yeah, we like the documentary. We were the first people to see the documentary. We are going to try to buy said documentary and become its distributor. And then we see where it goes from there. Very cool. Yeah. So happy now, for them. What is the best possible outcome after um, Behind the Curve, the documentary airs? and is shown at Hot Docs in April in Toronto. What is the best possible outcome for Flat Earth? 
the best possible wow you're asking me this after a big drink like that mm -hmm. the i'm almost done with mine by the way somebody named jamaican titan who's in the live chat was saying, you're drunk boo and and i said <laughs> nice i said no i'm okay <laughs> here's what i said to people i got i got that question last night on the show which is mm -hmm. well, how how do you think this is going to turn out and it's like okay this was some, what i've been waiting for in that the mainstream media can run little stories, little curiosity stories on flat earth, just on the people in, in general, right? But they're not anything that they can really sink their teeth into. Now that you have a film team like this who has made a documentary, once it becomes widely distri distrib distributed, then mainstream media can run full blown shows on it they can review it they can dice this thing up six ways from sunday because now they can say well it's not us it's not we're not interested somebody else already did it remember the remember i said the first person on the dance floor mm -hmm. this is a big team of people on the dance floor doing their thing and now everyone can like okay let's let's critique the hell out of this thing for for better or for worse and here's the best part it's the part i love is that if it does well at all, then you have the copycats. Remember the old thing in Hollywood, everything happens in twos or threes. And right. when it comes to television shows or something like this, everyone's like, okay, it can be, it turns into a gold rush, which is okay. This thing seems to be doing well. How can we do our version of it? How fast can we do it? Who can so these people don't care about flat earth. They just want to make money out of it. Yeah. yeah but of course to, uh, for us, but for us, we, it's fine. It's the, we it's the, use that. Yeah, the exposure. The out there. Yeah, the exposure is invaluable, right. and and it's long term. And they're fighting over doing it. Again, they don't. the The producer, remember the producer I did with uh, that Eminem podcast thing, where he said it doesn't matter if they love you or hate you, as long as they're talking about you. If they're talking about oh, you, so you can, true. Even on YouTube. Yeah, you can leverage that. And Even last show we did, we were talking negatively about PewDiePie, like, ah, oh, that's so boring, PewDiePie, oh, who would watch it? But you know what? One or two people went and checked out PewDiePie videos, and they even messaged me that they did after we spoke negatively about PewDiePie. Anyone who does a negative video or makes negative comments about anybody on YouTube, guaranteed people won't be unsubscribing from that person. They'll be checking them out and maybe subscribe. You'll be helping out the metrics. And yeah, you'll have other people jump on and say, I hate PewDiePie too. The same thing with this. We don't care, you know, the, the producers and us, we don't care if they love the film or they hate the film as long as they're talking about the film. Yeah, the worst thing would be like if they walked out and said, eh, yeah, eh. yeah, yeah. That's yeah, never that, going to happen. Well, no, it's no, we know that love or hate black or white. That's where we want it. Flat earth cannot be ignored. There's nobody. People are, that say they're on the fence. It's a bunch of crap. You've seen it too many times. People they're just afraid when people say they're on the fence. They're afraid of losing their subscribers. Right. They're afraid of being made fun of. And everybody's done flat earth videos. Now, everybody has commented. All the big channels now have chimed in, including the biggest one in the world regardless whether the numbers are real PewDiePie actually you know made a flat earth video with a bit with a thing in the title and the thumb all the major news stories we were in the perfect position now to take it to the next level and people think that we're Hollywood obsessed or celebrity obsessed or as something because we talk about this stuff all the time right. we don't care about any of that stuff we just know the mainstream world out there which all of us used to be a part of at one point or other in our lives that's the way they take the pulse of what's going on in the world by reading the newspapers, by watching TV, by looking at the magazines, et cetera. Um, we, we don't we care about it. We don't we care about that stuff. We, we care about what people are really interested in. Average Joe, average Jane. Exactly. And to get to them, you've got to reach, and we haven't hit it yet. We've, you've got to reach the highest level of media saturation. That being shows that we've never mentioned. Oh, I don't know. All your morning talk shows. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did the, the Good Morning Britain thing. But but Good Morning America hasn't touched it yet. The View hasn't touched it yet. I, I don't know all the different the different shows that are out there, different talk shows. You've got to have them. You know, the producers, once it's fed to them, then you've hit everywhere. I loved, you know, if Oprah was still around, you know, if Oprah actually started talking about mm. it. Uh, then, then you've got the the movie reviewers. That's also the, another level, which is okay. It's a documentary now. I mean, the fact that you know, if this gets to a certain point, you'll see it on Rotten Tomatoes. 
once it gets on you know rotten tomatoes oh boy then you've got and you've got your your major reviewers then you've got your super super reviewers down in the the fan section and where it goes from there it's, uh, it's but it's already gonna, on ind mdb mm -hmm. yes well yeah it is but it's not but it, again until it picks up a distributor and that's what we're that's what everyone's waiting for here's something interesting yeah. i know flat earth and other hot potatoes is on INDB, as is Patricia Steer, as is oh. Mark Sargent, Flat Earth Clues, as are oh, Jaronism and I, all these channels. How the heck did we get on there? I didn't put myself on there. I it's a mystery. Know, the same the same reason that one day and we still haven't had it yet. But, but they didn't even keep up with all the shows I had. Now, if I were doing I it, I'd have every show and every Ooh. guest. They kept up a while, and then they stopped. And I've tried to join INDB by paying some extra membership so I could go in and then add to it and add the different guests and shows I've done yeah. from when they stop whoever, whoever they is putting it on there. But it won't let me. Somebody else has claimed that. Same, they, same thing for the people. Who did that? Uh, the same people that create the wiki entries. That's also going to be one of those things where we have oh, we haven't what? had a flat earther become a wiki entry yet. Oh, that should be so cool. Who's going to be the first flat earth uh, wiki entry? I'm hoping it's D Marble. Oh my gosh, that would be that would be totally perfect, D Marble. D Marble for wiki entry. We need some yeah, somebody <laughs> somebody create a wiki entry. But again, the highest Everyone uh, likes him. He's really nice. He's really positive. He does a lot for the community. We, it's, we a, been, it's perfect. We've been media spoiled over the last year, no question. I mean, you and I are talking about stuff now that before, you know. Can you imagine half, what we're talking about now compared oh yeah, to two, two and a half years ago, we would have been like, oh God, it'd be so great. And now it's like, yeah, yeah, just throw it on the pile. Remember you and I were talking about doing a, uh, a conference and we were going to do it somewhere and we talked about it on a show back maybe 2015. Oh, Vegas, 20, I think. Early 2016. In, yeah. And oh my gosh, that thing was shot down so hard. And then. Yeah. All of a sudden, conferences started happening. Same with meetups. We talked about that before it ever happened. Totally shot down and laughed at. Boom, started happening. Now you it becomes the first one acceptable. To, to do a meetup. You you can lay that claim to fame, which is you were literally the first flight. Well, meetup. when you're an innovator, no, I'm not saying I'm an innovator. I'm saying any of us who do something first, even become a flat earther, first flat earther in your family, first flat earther at your workplace, whatever. Right. Um, you are pointed, ha ha ha, stupid. But you have to just take it. Take it. No problem. Really? We're going to do that, that shake it off thing? Yeah, shake it off. <laughs> Hope you're listening, Taylor. All right. So shake it off. And uh, what's the other one? Haters going to hate. Haters going to hate. I'm not a Taylor Dan fan. Taylor Dan. Taylor Dan. Taylor Dan. <laughs> nice. Nice. Taylor, Taylor, Dan. Taylor Swift as opposed to Tiger Dan, who, as you may know, has. <laughs> Tyler, Taylor like, Swift and Tiger Dan. It's Taylor Dan, <laughs> who has <laughs> killing a brand me. new singer. <laughs> he wears a hat. He does biblical stuff and drinking shows are such a great idea. And he's also a blonde. So yeah. Tiger Dan has are awesome. Forty three thousand subs. I love the fact that he's gaining. He gains subs every he week. And he more has subs than either you and I together. <laughs> no, no, no. He doesn't have that many, but he has a, he has more than most in the community oh, and. Yeah. And he, he's not even active. He hasn't done a video in two years. And no one knows what happened to him. Or no, he could be dead. He literally could be dead. And his channel is just going to keep just keep cranking him up. I hope he's not dead. I hope he's not dead either. He's oh, it would be dead. nice if, he's at, if anyone knows where Tiger Dan is. Nobody knows. Otherwise, he's, otherwise, the Tiger Dan Award is going to remain. Always Tiger Dan's. Tiger Dan. In the flatties. Uh He's my was my thirteenth show, and I interviewed him, and he said something along the lines: "If if I ever go against flat Earth, you'll know it's because I've been because they say? got to me. Yeah, they got to they, me. They tortured yeah. me or something." They tortured that. Me. Mm -hmm. Wow! And at the time when he did that in the interview, and when he said that, I thought absolutely nothing of it. Then he you were one of the last people to see him alive. Yeah, it's what they say. It's true. Until well, you know, Ixnay on the Iger Dan. A Umers Ray. <laughs> oh, rumors. Got mm -hmm. it. Got it. I know my pig Latin even after I, one I, drink. I, I talk about after one drink, I will not know even what mission it. briefings and how you were looking at his file going, oh, this guy's just annoying. Can we do something? Like this guy's fine. got to go. It's like yeah. you're gonna have to take it out of your fashion budget. It's like fine, fine, I'll do that. 
<sighs> All right. Do we have anything else? I'd love to know what happened to him. I'd love to know what happened to Aaron Dover. What happened? Where'd he go? I know they say he fell wait, off a he, roof. Wait, he did die though, right? I mean, do we have proof of that? That's what they say. Hmm. I mean, for a flat earther, proof is far more than just someone saying X, Y, Z occurred. Uh, you know, we I, require I, much more when it comes to proof. I don't mind bringing this up uh, because, well, I mean, it's been a little while. And I really need the answer to this. I heard a rumor that my ex show host, mm -hmm. John Macedo, passed oh, away. John no. I heard that. I heard that. I was, oh I God, was told, I was told, I was told this some time ago, but I can't prove it because it's, no, I don't believe that. I I don't want to believe that. I, That's shocking. I know. No, if that were true, we'd know. Well, would we? How many people were, t were in, in touch with John? Remember, he was old school. He, now, John had a girlfriend and they lived wife. together and they built, oh, it was a wife, I'm sorry. Yeah, second and wife. they built a place called the Zen Den together in New York. Yeah. He lived in New Jersey. Yeah. I did a show with him on TFR when he had a show. Yep. For my birthday, two years ago or a year ago? I two years remember. ago. Two years ago. Where members of the village people were on and they sang happy birthday to me. He and I were right. in touch he for actually a while. Had, he actually had a member of the village people. Yes. It, it and, was a friend of his. Uh, that was cool. And he and I kept in touch and then we fell out of touch. No way he's dead. I, you know, I wouldn't have said so either. I got it from oh a gosh, fairly- Oh my gosh, such a depressing thing. I know. We won't end the show on that. No. The, uh, it was a reliable source. If anybody knows where Jonathan from Jersey went- Jonathan from Jersey. I would love to know because I, I again, I heard this from a, a source I trust. Then there was a drama involving Orphan Red. Orphan We're Red. off camera on Truth Frequency Radio, off mic. Uh, she was on hold, and John and you were in the same room, and Jonathan, John said something sort of kind of Jonathan. negatively sexual. Oh. Orphan heard it. She hung up. She was offended. He found out a day later that didn't she didn't think he did anything wrong, really. And there well, was an argument. No, he was and, doing the whole. And music. you said, you know what, dude? That is unacceptable. You cannot do that to a woman or to any human being on my watch. And you kind of cut ties with Jonathan. And I was very, very proud of you for doing that. Oh. As opposed to saying, oh, guys will be good. Well, I look, I don't, I always, always will give women, women the benefit of the doubt. But and what he said was beyond the. No. Oh no, he was. He it was, was bad. He was. He was talking like a guy would talk to his buddies at a club after guys he broke up guys, with somebody. I get that, and I get yeah. that things can be forgiven on women. Do things too that are horrible, but well, this is like crossing the line. Was, and I'm not mean. saying this in a way as if that Jonathan's a bad guy because he is a good guy. He no, just, no, he was a good guy. You know, he got some issues. Don't we all? Yeah, and that's not uh, that if if it is true that he passed away then no, i don't, i don't think that had it's not that that orphan red killed him i'm not going to say that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well anyway okay so can you where have you heard it just sort of rumors in the wind no no i i heard it from a so Trusted i'll mention source? i'll mention i'll mention to you off air okay who, who i heard it from because you know him as well okay so. That's sad. sad anyway, news. let's find something happy to end the show on. I don't even know what to do. Oh now. my god! Oh, I'm you know what? Around. I've not even gone in the live chat and said hi to anyone. All right, say that hi to people. Good always Lord. happy. That'll cheer you up. That'll cheer me up. Oh my god! Not those comments. No, just joking. <laughs> We've got 245 people viewing now. And David Blackson is here asking where Sunny Peaches is. Sunny Peaches is totally fine. She's making videos. She's awesome, as always. Timaeus is here. Bob Bobrowski and Bill Keith as well. Um, people are talking about what we just spoke about with John. Stephen Chess is here as well. And Glenn Parent as well. Bartholomew is here, somebody I've not seen before. Hello, Morgan Alice, and go find the others. And um, there's some person named Mark Sargunt, and that person got deleted by Karen B. Thank you, Karen B., for being an <laughs> awesome moderator. Hello, Faze. And uh, Lanny from Canada, how you doing? Hey, Lanny, Lanny is from Canada. Perfect person to ask. I don't know what part of Canada you're from, but... Do you know the Toronto area? Do you know the entertainment district? Do you know a good place for a meetup? And I hope you come. If so, message me at missteer at gmail.com. Um, what else we got? Zulu1. Hello, Zulu. 
Martin Leadkey. Hey, Martin, one of the best channels ever, Martin Leadkey. You will get information that you could never dig up yourself because Martin's got rare books and plenty of them. Nora, no one's flower is here too. Uh, Zoe, a fear and love is here as well. Uh, Jibby Jedi, Zane, who writes some awesome lyrics. Matrix Media, who says, hello guys. Hi, Arwin. By the way, things are cheering up rapidly, aren't they, Mark? As long as I'm in the yes, live chat, are. not talking about people who potentially passed away. Sorry. Brian Stavely is here too. Um, Chris Topher, who uh, earlier was saying he was having a drink too. Um, scrolling up to Bob of Globusters, Carolyn Gutman Day, who was saying sub to Martin Lee Key's channel now. I'm with you on that one. Uh, Rob Morrill, Midnight Gardener. I like that name, Midnight Gardener. I mean, I do lots of stuff at midnight that might be considered weird by most people's standards, but gardening is not one of them. I should do that, though. Um, <laughs> Ute Hube is here. I mentioned Jamaican Titan earlier. Um, and just so many people here. I'm scrolling up. And if you know what, since this is my first time delving into the live chat since the show started, if I were to like read everything, I'd be totally lost. So I won't even bother doing it. But hi to everyone. And thank you for being here. And give the video a thumbs up. And um, oh, by the way, Russian Vids just popped in. Russian Vids 2, who says, I've created a new channel. So it's Russian space Vids 2. Vids 2 is all run together. So hopefully that is the real Russian vids. And hopefully that is his new channel. Because we mentioned his recently created new channel got taken down. Oh, wait, that might not be the real Russian vids because he got timed out. So scratch all that. <sighs> nice. Wesley stays Flat Earth News. Hello. Carrie Thomas says, I'm a night owl too. I get most of my best work done at night. Laurel Austin is here. Hey, Laurel, how are you? Hello to Dan Cooper and Four Eyes to See. Four Eyes to See, Carrie, she says, come on, Patricia, mention all 250 of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't, no, yeah, no. And uh, uh, Karen B, thank you for being good mod. And anyway. Who's Karen B? Karen B, you don't know who that is. <laughs> You've never met her in I'm person. I'm excited, by the way, <laughs> whenever, I don't I know what they're- I question everything, by the way. I don't know where they're doing or what they're doing with the Hungary footage. As far as the laser test over there, I mean, I've seen some of the stuff on it. Mm -hmm, I don't mm -hmm. know if they're turning it into something bigger. Somebody email me. Let me know what the official scoop is. Are you or Karen could let us know when she's not busy moderating and banning and Karen, call me. You know what I'm saying? Call me. <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do an ASMR thing. Mm -hmm. the, Karen B has the most amazing female voice in Florida. If she ever talked, she talks a lot. I like that much. She's she's when she speaks, it's something of substance. She's the strong, silent type. Actually, I should change that. She's the armed, silent type. Yeah, she certainly is armed. She is yeah. armed and knows how to use that gun. Yep. Um, Zulu One says, All right, Patricia, I like the night too. You know, I like the nightlife, I like to boogie. Oh, Name that song. <laughs> my god, okay. J Juby Jedi says, Karen B once killed 50 trolls, 50 if it were one. Hmm. <laughs> It's fifty. Oh, that was <laughs> if and it that, were one. Yeah, that's yeah. That's one of those old timey things. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, Homer was his name. <laughs> Red hair like the fires of hell. Exactly. Six hey. feet if he, seven feet if he was an inch. Yeah. Exactly. Anyway, so um, Ginger Sugarbush, I hope you will help as well in the search for the perfect place for the April thirtieth meetup in Toronto. So. Yeah, well, by next week, we'll have a better idea of what we're going to do. Got to be a place where it won't cost anybody to enter. Who has a cover charge? I don't if know. We have to, if we have to go to a place with a cover charge, we're at the wrong place. Well, maybe we're at the right place, but we can get the cover charge waived. If you have a cover, if awesome. there's a, uh, no, if you're, it's a cover <laughs> charge, okay, we're not going to a strip club or not going to a comedy club. Mm -hmm. And if the restaurant requires a cover, I'm, cover well, maybe charge. just some bars require something. I don't know. I doubt it. You're right. Seriously. I, I, I don't know how they do things in Canada. I don't know anything about Canucks. <laughs> All restaurants have cover charges. <laughs> I think it's a good idea, though. I mean, you can't get those free crackers and free water without paying the cover charge. <laughs> Dirty up those cloth napkins. Leave without paying. It's not good. I... Um, Peanuts <laughs> Clark is here. 
and says the UK is going flat. I certainly hope so. Oh, by the way, Jibby Jetty said casinos run free. Lots of people everywhere just saying because Jibby and uh, Mark, M-A-R-C, Zulu One recently had an event at a casino. Um, they met up, I guess, kind of outside uh, of New Jersey. So, right. uh, Lanny says just club charges at times. So Yeah, yeah. we're not clubbing. You know what? I haven't been clubbing in so long. I can't remember. I remember going to a place called Club Soda when I was under the age of eighteen. That's I remember clubbing. going to a pilot's bar. Pilot's bar. There's yeah, such it was a weird. It was all guys. It was called the Cockpit. Oh no. no, no, no! It was a construction bar. It was called mm. the Manhole. Mm. And afterwards, did everyone go to the Notel Motel? <laughs> Just asking. And movie reference, after that, yeah, we were bar hopping, went to the Blue Oyster. <laughs> or you know, did you drop there. in, maybe? I mean, no judgment. but uh, you know. Hey, all God's children. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, Elspeth Awake, by the way. Hello to you. And Elspeth Awake has a brand new video. It's her F-E-O-H-P video. Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes video. Check it out. I mentioned oh, it yeah, last but, week. By the way, make sure you guys, if you haven't seen it yet, and I saw it just briefly last night, check out the Hori Sheet Show's new background. Oh my gosh, the Hori Sheet Show. I mean, there's so many people that I haven't mentioned because I didn't mention everybody in here he, uh, he that have done awesome it. things. That and I think he debuted it, and it's really, and really you know cool. What? I have to mention, oh my gosh, I forgot, that the um, screenshot, not screenshot, ugh, see, the drinking got to me, the thumbnail which is basically a screenshot, which is a picture of something, which is uh, the cover picture of this video. Wow. Is more some... redundant. Oh, yeah, whatever. I don't like to repeat things over and over and over and over repetitive. again. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, it is a picture of hot potato vodka, which actually exists. It's a real thing. It's not Photoshop. It's a real thing. Yeah. And I used that as the, um, the thumbnail for this video because we were going to have a cocktail. So anyway. Just letting you know. And the Hori Sheet Show said that there's such a thing as Hori Sheet Beer. That's funny. Is that where he stole it from? I don't know. I think he just came up with it. I'm trying to find bandwagon videos from... Bandwagoners? Uh, well, yeah. it's That's my new term, basically. Any channel that has not touched Flat Earth that is now jumping on it now... It, you know, within this last week. I usually um, do makeup tutorials, but hey, Flat Earth is cool. Yeah, that it's kind bandwagon. Of if, if this is their first Flat Earth video over the last three years, then they're late to the game. I appreciate talk about them. skateboarding and skateboarding accessories. And hey, Flat Earth over there looks interesting. Yeah. I mean, Inside Edition, they're sort of a news program, even though it's straight out of a time warp. But the the rest of them, you know, like you saw that girl I, I sent you from the mall. Yes. Girl, girl and her grandfather. Mm -hmm. It's like walking around in a mall talking about flat earth. Um, that girl has way too much coffee if she drinks coffee. Yeah. Or maybe she or maybe she steals prescription drugs. No, 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 no. no. She's pretty up. Um, let's see. I wanted to mention meetups. If you've got a meetup happening, you don't need to be alone. Let everyone know. Let Mark Sargent know specifically at msargent23 at comcast.net. And I mentioned that earlier. I want to mention it again because he'll make you a promo. That way, more people will know about your meetup. And and, somebody and, just mentioned I don't, one that's happening in Canada. Let me see if I can scroll I, up and I find it. I don't have oh, to make Bob it. Bob Bobrowski, a Canadian Flat Earth meetup July 15th in Wonerland. Wait a minute. Bonerland? It's got to be fake because July 15th so far away. Bob Bobrowski, are you pulling our chain or leg? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think it's pulling your leg, although pulling your chain it isn't it off the, it's off the chain. It's off the hook. Uh Wesley says Flat Earth News Talk says don't forget to meet up this Saturday, March 31st in Minneapolis, Minnesota at the Flat Earth Brewery. Oh wow. 4 p.m. Central Time. And I really again, I, I I'm fine with making a, a promo from scratch. If you make one on your channel, though, it makes it super easy for me. Then I can just grab it yeah. and throw it on my channel. Unless you want to see me do some slides and some music. and I want to say hello and thank you to all people, free people. David, who's doing some great moderating in the chat as some people are doxing me and putting my address. You know what? My address has already been put out there. Into my the, address into is the literally, ether. <laughs> literally in the description box of every video. And I've got 1,100 videos now. And if anybody would like to come by and hassle me, remember to bring me a present. Because when you arrive... 
I'll have a present for you, and it's made out of lead. That's not true. It'd be true with me, but how do you know? Uh, well, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt because <laughs> I'm guessing you spent more time with your clandestine operations training than you did with firearms training. Well, we don't really know exactly what I'm speaking of. Maybe no. uh, musicians for truth, known as synthetic dread. Jason has taught me a little bit of archery on the side. Or no, and I've got. I know. I, I remember these conversations. I want to do advanced espionage. That sounds glamorous. <laughs> Whatever. Well, anyway, you get to wear better clothes. I should have listened, actually. Hmm. Well, to everyone, moi, thank you for being here for the show today, and I would appreciate a thumbs up or a subscription to this channel, or you can subscribe to Mark's channel if you want. It's not as good as mine, but you know. It's okay. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk later. We'll talk next time. Thanks to everyone who's been here. And Mark, thank you for being here. And cheers. Thank you for enjoying a cocktail with me. Blame Canada. We always do. This is episode 209 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. And from Mark Sargent and myself, keep it flat. Hail Hydra. George Clooney. Oop, crap. What did I just do?